With a frequency distribution in hand, we can then talk about picking out ways to better show what's going on with the data. That is to better see certain patterns to more eye-catchingly represent our information. And the two main ways we're gonna look at it here are in terms of histograms and frequency polygons. That is special kinds of bar and line graphs designed for showing off frequency distributions. Where a histogram is just a bar graph where the heights or sometimes the widths, if you see them written horizontally, represent the frequency in each class, and each bar corresponds to a single class. For example, here we can look at the histogram we could generate from the maximum yearly growth data set, like so. Similarly, for a frequency polygon, we essentially form a line graph by connecting the dots at the midpoint of each of the classes, or in the middle of each of the tops of the histograms, because usually you make a frequency polygon given a histogram, where we would do something like this to our data set, to our histogram that we just saw. And if you've done anything with calculus, that sort of thing might look a little bit familiar with the word maybe, Ramon, bouncing around in your head. Don't, don't worry if it doesn't. I just like hinting at that stuff because calculus is the heart of a lot of what we do with stats. But point is, these are two pictures we can make where you can more clearly see the pattern in the data set. In particular, you can see the pattern says that, well, 14 is where most boys have the most growth with some amounts of things on either side of it. That's a special pattern that we have in a histogram, but not the sort of thing we're gonna worry about right here, right now. Next, instead, we're gonna talk about a different sort of picture we can make, which we call a stem and leaf plot to group up our data in a different way.